how do you eliminate I quit from your law firm? The number one way at the top, 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 top of the list is to give people a opportunity to advance in their lives within your law firm. And if your law firm is not growing and there is no vision for the future, the chance of people sticking around is very, very high or low. What I'm going to talk about is I'm going to go from a perspective that Andy hasn't even heard before. And I'm going to talk about how rolling out a goal attainment infrastructure for your firm and then incentivizing your team based on that goal attainment infrastructure is one of the keys to retaining high level team members. Okay. So let me try to explain this and make it super simple. So what is the most expensive bonus for a company? The, the number one most expensive bonus to ever give in a company is equity, equity. Okay. Ownership in your law firm is the most expensive bonus or incentive you could ever give to someone. Okay. So at the highest end of the scale, when you're trying to think, how do I lock in a high level attorney to my firm? Okay. The most valuable that you could give up is going to be equity in some way, shape, or form, okay? And I'm not talking about profit sharing. I'm talking about true ownership equity as a portion of your law firm, okay? So doing this with high-level attorneys in your law firm is something that a lot of people don't talk about. So I actually want to talk about, first, how do you set up and earn an equity? Uh, and not necessarily first. I'm going to work my way up to that, okay? Okay. The, the step below that is some form of revenue sharing of sorts, whichever you're capable or whatever is legal. I'm not an attorney, okay? But having something that is tied to the actual revenue growth or revenue production within your law firm, right? And then the level below that is what we would call KPI-based, key performance indicator-based bonuses. So at the highest end of the spectrum, the most expensive thing you could ever give up is equity. A level below that, okay, is going to be some form of revenue share, okay, profit share, whatever is legal within the role that you're talking about. And then the level below that is some form of a bonus that is tied to performance, okay? Meaning key performance indicators being met. So now here is one of the most important things that you could ever do is create a system that naturally creates incentives around all three of these levels all at once. I understand this is complicated, but when you're thinking, how do I retain high level people? Okay. Somehow, some way, some shape, some form, the person has to win as the company wins. Okay. Somehow, some way, some shape, some form, the person needs to win as the company wins, okay? Now, Netflix is on the far end of the spectrum of this. Netflix says, we're going to pay people high salaries, and then we're not going to play the whole bonus and incentive game. Did everyone just understand that model that I just showed you? So they do incentivize people for sticking around Netflix, but they do it by just giving really high base salaries. And then they don't really need to worry about the KPIs and profit sharing and all that stuff. Okay. So that's the far end of the spectrum. And then there's performance-based companies. Like for example, Nordstrom's. Nordstrom's is known as being rugged individualism as a culture. So Nordstrom's, they are very much like hit your personal performance metrics, hit your personal da 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 right? And Nordstrom's will pay out on almost all KPIs, right? Key performance indicators being met. So there's basically this spectrum of, I'm gonna pay high base salaries and then not worry about incentives, or I'm gonna pay a lower base and I'm gonna pay a higher percentage of the total comp in some form of an incentive, okay? So there's a whole spectrum on how do you wanna actually tie people in in your firm to the upside, okay? Now, I will say there are plenty of high-performing companies that don't play the bonus and incentive game. There's plenty of companies that retain high-level team members by just upping salaries in some way, shape, and form tied to performance, right? Now, here's the hard thing on the salaries thing. 
if you're going to pay above average market salaries, you need to be able to fire people. Like it doesn't work if you're going to pay people top of market salaries and then not hold them accountable and allow subpar performance. You can't allow subpar performance and pay high level salaries. Okay. So it's really important that if you're going to do the high salary route and give people that high level of, of, um, uh, security in their base salary, that it's accompanied with high levels of accountability and you willing to terminate people. Right. And then on the other side, it's important that if you're going to do a high incentive structure that you need to make it so that the incentives that you set are actually bonused on true bonusable activities, not participation trophies, right? Bonus, bonus, okay? Not subpar. You are bonusing people on elite performance. So above their day-to-day -day responsibilities is what people should be receiving a bonus on. They should not be receiving bonuses for participation. Otherwise, that should be reflected in their comp, right? They should be receiving bonuses for things that are above and beyond their requirements in their role, right? So someone who is not growing, someone who is not advancing their skills within your law firm should not be receiving bonuses.